Inspired by the hit 1980s television show, The Fall Guy stars Ryan Gosling as a retired stuntman who's drafted back into action when the star of a big budget movie directed by his ex, played by Emily Blunt, goes missing. Here today to tell us more, director David Leach and former stuntman himself and his wife, producer Kelly McCormick. How are we doing? We're doing great. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. good. So excited to be we're here. Great. Congratulations yeah. on the movie. Like it's Thank incredible. You. You're having a premiere tonight, right? Yeah, the Thank premiere's you. tonight. Yeah. yeah, it's really exciting. Little mm -hmm. butterflies, you know. <laughs> it's a world premiere. Like, it's crazy. But we wanted, you know, South by is really special to us because. Mm -hmm. Uh, seven years ago to this date, we premiered Atomic Blonde here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, I love Atomic Blonde. It's been good to us. Yeah, yeah. it's been good to us. Seriously, really good to I us. still think of that staircase scene to this day. It's <laughs> one of those things that you really don't forget. Right. But Butterflies, I mean, you've done Atomic Blonde, Deadpool 2. You've done so many things that people love, and you still get the butterflies. Yeah, oh, of yeah. course. You know, you put your art out into the world, and you just want people to, like, appreciate it and have a good time. Mm -hmm. And, like, this movie um, has all of that potential, mm -hmm. you know, and I think we just want people to dive into this crazy world of cold Seavers and escape and have fun. Right. Well, I know you say you want people to love it. I already know one person who does love it. We'll get into that in a second. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you know who it is, too. But we'll talk about it. But again, congratulations on the film. But David, let's start with like something that maybe not everyone knows about you. You used to be a stuntman yourself. Yeah. Right? And which yeah. is incredible. And now you're directing. So can you talk to people about like your career and just like give us an overview of how you became stuntman director? Legendary. Dave. Yeah, I'll try. Uh, thank, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I will. I'll try to make it brief. But I came to L.A. as a martial artist, um, mm -hmm. and I was, you know, I got into a group of people that were kind of working in B movies, doing mm -hmm. martial arts and movies, and I'm like, wow, you get paid to do fight scenes and movies, <laughs> and so um, I quickly sort of um, dived in the best I could, and it, mm -hmm. it and then. Um, trained myself up as a stuntman. It's sort of an um, apprentice type business. You find right. someone who's going to mentor you and you learn how to do falls and cars and all of that stuff. And just like anything in the film business, it takes a while to break in. Mm -hmm. um, and I got the great opportunity to double Brad Pitt on Fight Club. Yeah, nice. And um, from, yeah, yeah, it was a big <laughs> opportunity. And I had been doing television for several years and then this, you know, um, magical moment happens and from there I did five movies with him and then I got to know a lot of more people in the business and mm -hmm. then just snowballed into a really great stunt career mm -hmm. but that whole time I was really loving my the process of telling a story through action um, and I was shooting and editing my own stuff mm -hmm. and we were getting and was shooting shorts um, and I was looking to find a way to the director chair and then I met Kelly McCormick who um, really figured out how to foster my career. <laughs> <laughs> the look on your face, Kelly. <laughs> no, that's true. He's tell, he sounds like he's telling the truth I'm to telling me. the total <laughs> truth. Yeah, it sounds like Kelly he, the, you became our manager. Yeah. yeah, but like you couldn't have like kept you down. Like you were rising anyway, probably. Oh, like Kelly, it was just the like <laughs> Can I take the credit. <laughs> That's not the case because really, um, when Kelly came on board to manage me and actually Chad at the time, it was like transformative into our understanding of what you need to be a director. There's mm -hmm. a difference, like when you're an action director, or a, a stunt performer. What? But there's a whole what's expected for you and like pitch meetings and story and right. all of those things and like. You, she really honed our chops and all of that stuff to get us prepared to mm -hmm. find the movie that would work for us. And and then she discovered that movie, John Wick, mm -hmm. and then sort of the rest is history. But it's, you want to talk yeah, about right. it? Right. You want to add to that? Yeah, I, I, I see blushes coming out <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> You're too great. Truth. Yeah, all truth, <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna just leave it there because it's true, okay? Yeah. All so right. it's a journey that a, not a lot of people have taken, but a lot of didn't have like great um, mentorship along the way. Mm -hmm. And then, um, look, I've just had a real passion to tell right. stories outside of just hitting the ground. Right. And so. Well, you're telling it. You you were a stunt man, and now you're telling the story of a stunt man, and it's all inspired by uh, apparently a favorite TV show you used to have about <laughs> a stunt man called The Fall Guy. Yes. You're wearing a t-shirt. Can you show the shirt to the yep, camera right camera. now? I really want people to see this. <laughs> Lee Majors. Lee Majors. <laughs> there he is. Dude, it looks good. Thank it, you. And yeah, the thank color you, coordination Pip. with the blazer. I know. It was, yeah, um, nice. yes. Kelly, was this you or was this all him? It was all him. He's better at dressing than I am. I don't know about that. that. Style. <laughs> well, um, it was a It was a movie. It was a TV show that actually lit the fuse for a lot of um, stunt performers from my generation. 
and they, you know, we were, you know, watch it on Friday nights, and you dream about coming to Hollywood and getting into all the hijinks that they did. Right. And um, so, yeah, it was really, when that property came to us at 87 North, we got really excited at the potential of it. That's great. Yeah. Kelly, are you a fan of the show as well? Did you, do you have an experience with it? Um, I didn't have a ton until we sort of like got into it, but um, you know, it definitely was, now that I've studied it, it's like, you know, it was doing some pretty cool things, especially mm -hmm. practical stunts at a level yeah. that are not done in television at all anymore, right. and often not done in film. So, and they were doing giant car leaps, rolls, crashes, like every day, every week, mm -hmm. you know, on a television schedule, it's actually really hard to do. And yeah. like, yeah, it's just not possible anymore. Yeah. So it's pretty cool that like, that was the thing that like a lot of the stunt community talks about is like the, the good old days. Right, <laughs> it's, it's funny that you say that because again, we don't see it as much anymore, but it's to the point where when we do see practical stunts happening, we're in awe of it, right? Mm -hmm. We saw it with Mad Max Fury Road as well, yeah. movies that have come since then. And mm -hmm. so watching the trailer, I'm just kind of like, is this gonna have like that practical action that we're used to? Like, what, what can we expect from this? Yeah, we've done a lot of practical action bigger than really we've done in the past, like mm -hmm. arguably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, even on a Hobbs and Shaw, you know, we would do sort of the Hobbs and Shaw model of practical enhanced with visual effects and mm -hmm. sort of a heightened sort of physics. But this we really wanted to pay tribute to old school stunts and like do some grounded practical things that were like right. next level. Really big deal. Rig yeah. Big, right. big stunts. I, I really do like the timing of this film because, uh, you know, the Oscars had just passed. Great, <laughs> like, moment having Ryan Gosling and, you know, Emily Blunt present, like, you know, just like best, not best stunts, but just kind of like celebrating stunts. Yes. Right. Okay. right. And I feel yeah. like very much on the horizon, very soon, like, you know, best stunts is a category at the Oscars coming up which we've been waiting for forever, yeah. right? And, and a lot of people in the stunt community have been working toward for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, people like, you know, the Jack old Gill, guys uh, back in the days, Jack Greg Gill Smurfs. and Greg Smurz, like have really been doing the, making the steps happen to get us to a place where we can maybe now convert. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, the Academy inviting us to the, you know, to do a tribute with them this year, um, make, makes it really feel like they're open to it, you right. know, like we have hope. And so we're really, really excited about it. I think they are too. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm like, you can't have the stars of Fall Guy, like, you know, play a tribute to stunts <laughs> and then not do a stunt category, right? They can't walk back from you that. You can't walk right? back from that. You really can't. That's I was, what we're hoping for. I was really watching it like, please tell me this is an announcement for the category <laughs> fire. They did best casting. I We need this. Yeah. And then hopefully, you know, sometime soon we will get that. Maybe Fall Guy can, you know, make it just in time to win that award. Maybe. You never know. You you never, never know. know. You, never, you know. never know. You never know. That'd be, very, that'd be very cool. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. So outside of the TV show and kind of like your experiences with that, we're making a film version now. What was the thing that pushed you over the top to say, let's do, let's bring this to people in the modern day and make a film based off of this beloved uh, mm -hmm. property? You know, one of the things for me is that I really feel like stunt people are really interesting people. You mm -hmm. know, they work really hard. They have a lot of mm -hmm. passion for what they do. Um, they're partially like the you know, daredevils, but they're also kind of the safest people yeah. in the world, like, cause they know all the things that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. So like, I can't cross the street without him going like this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Very chivalrous, but you know, there's also another thing it's going also on. Like, yeah, you're, you're like, I can't cross the street. Risk. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> risk. But um, they also have to, you know, th they put it all on the line for mm -hmm. their jobs and in a really, really dangerous place. Right. And they can never show their faces, actually. That's our <laughs> job is to be anonymous. Yeah. And I really think it's a connectable sort of like feeling for a lot of people in our mm -hmm. society who, right. you know, kind of do their best, you know, go to work, mm -hmm. show up, mm -hmm. deliver yeah. every day and kind of aren't seen, you right. know? Right, unsung heroes for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so there's a wish fulfillment component to it that to me I think is like way past like just the stunt aspect or the, you know, sort of, um, it's just a great protagonist to kind mm -hmm. of focus on for, to, for that connectability hopefully. Right, right. Sp speaking of protagonists, you know, Ryan Gosling is in this movie and how great is he, first off? You know, He's like amazing. The, the multi-talented, the way he performed at the Oscars. Like yeah. he, he can do comedy, he can do romance, he can do action. It's just He's brilliant. Brilliant. Genius. Right? Brilliant. And he's going to love this when he sees this. Like, yeah. um, but he already knows. We tell him <laughs> all the knows, time. <laughs> he knows, right? At this point, you can't, be, you can't be humble at this point. I can't imagine how humble you could be knowing this. But um, apparently this 
movie had a completely different direction before he jumped on board. Uh, can you talk to me about the changes this movie made once Ryan Gosling signed on? Yeah, we, so we, we went to Ryan early on. So um, I think we went, we had a treatment, a really, well, a germ of an idea. Like we knew we wanted maybe a noirish sort of uh, feel and it was gonna be Colts on an investigation and all of that stuff. But, um, and, but Ryan signed on before a script and the early conversations were really exciting. And one of the things that he said that you just mentioned earlier, he's like, look, I've really got honed my chops in romance mm -hmm. and I've honed my chops in comedy, you know, the nice guys and mm -hmm. I do SNL and I love that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just did this big action movie, The Gray Man, and I got to yeah. experience like the, what that's like. And he goes, I would really love to make this movie have all of those things so I can use all the tools in my toolbox and like, you know, and just have fun. And we're like, okay, then let's try to find, let's work the story around that as well. Like how can we have elements of comedy, romance and, mm -hmm. and action? Um, and so then we started to lean into that. And then, um, you know, the romance itself just started to become really important because it was driving the motivation of the character. Right, right. And um, it just started to expand in the script. And then when we got Emily involved, it got even better right. because she had her input into it. And so, yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, I think probably it was going in those directions anyway, to be honest, like right. David, it takes you on all those places, all those places, like, you know, uh, it, it, I call him, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. I call him yeah. atonal, you're crying one day, you're like <laughs> laughing, or one moment, you're laughing the next, you're like, you know, it, but there's still a lot of stakes in the those whole experience. Yeah. And I think that makes his movies really kinetic and exciting. So there was probably going to be all that mushed together anyway. But right. like, the great thing with Ryan is that they, they, they work incredibly well together. They see, they saw the movie, the same movie mm -hmm. and they're always about making it better and better and better mm -hmm. every word every letter every like shirt every everything <laughs> and it just like yeah, kind yeah. of allows for it to be this like living breathing thing mm -hmm. that um they you know that that just kind of gets cooler and better uh, as you go all the yeah. way through like the final cut <laughs> yeah because i think like and that's that's so true because i think a lot of um not every filmmaker is like that, and every filmmaker has a different process, but right. I always say I'm not a slave to the script. I'm um, a really a slave to the, the characters in the story, mm -hmm. and they're gonna take us to these places, and they're making characters come to life, and they're coming up with all these interesting quirks and ideas, and let's make sure that we plant them, pay them off, expand it, mm -hmm. get them in the draft, and that's all happening in real time. Yeah. And some people, some directors, that's not their process. They're like, the script is the actors, Bible. Right. And some, some actors, actors are not. Isn't. Right, right. I mean, I, the theme that I've been picking no. up from a lot of creators who sat on this couch like you are right now is, you know, creating a movie or just storytelling is very fluid. Yeah. Right? And it's kind of like listening to what the story needs versus like your thought process and what you think it is because you, right. you could be in your own way of something great. A thousand right. percent. So right. hearing yeah. that is like absolutely great. Now, right. before Ryan Gosling's head gets too big somewhere, if he's <laughs> listening. Uh, let's talk about Emily. Uh, you know, oh. she plays his ex in the movie, and the chemistry just looks so amazing. You know, they, it's so easy the way, it's a believable, like, yeah. ex situationship. Uh, can you talk to me about what ex situationship? Ex -situationship. Ex -situationship. <laughs> I, like you know? I, I just I came up with that I'm right now. That. <laughs> <laughs> I will <laughs> footnote you, but I'm going to use that. I, uh, I said that in my, my mind. I said, wow. Ex That's a good one. That's, That's, great. Good. That's really good. Hey, we got it on camera, so happy about <laughs> this never happens. But um, in terms of like their chemistry, can you talk to us about like what about those two like great actors make what makes their chemistry work? Hmm. Well, I mean, to be honest, we didn't know. You never know, right? Mm -hmm. Unless right. you get get an opportunity to do a chemistry read, and when you're that big, you kind of don't. But the truth is, like right before Emily came on, we converted her role from a makeup artist to a first-time director. Mm -hmm trying to raise the stakes for her, trying to put her in a position where, you know, it, when he arrives, it's, you know, she's already got her hands full and right. he is the last thing that she could <laughs> ever use yeah. at that moment. Just like an ex situation. Just like yeah. an ex situation. <laughs> yeah. um, and the pressure's really on her, you know, and I think that she actually, it, it, we can't believe it to this day, but mm -hmm. Emily read the rough draft of that incarnation mm -hmm. at, which allowed for us all to kind of like grow that character together and and also Colt's relationship to that character from nascent sort of stages you mm -hmm. know and I think that that's one of the things that kind of 
also created the chemistry. I mean, I think they have, cr right. look, they have crazy chemistry naturally, <laughs> yeah. but like sort of like really being able to kind of grow both characters together in a way, right from 100%. both mm -hmm. of their involvement allowed for them to kind of really understand them in a way that they could really play off of one another. Right. And totally, and just to add to that, they're both really giving actors and a lot of, you know, it's not about like, um, what's my character would say right. and what your character would say or like what much, what my character needs or what's the outcome of this scene. It's like, it's really supporting, like how do I support your character in this scene and how do you support my character in this scene? Immediately, mm -hmm. and I think that just comes because they're great actors and there's no insecurities, the confidence is so, they also, just want the best outcome of the scene right. and they're like finding it and you're just like, it's really amazing to watch mm -hmm. in real time. Yeah, and the way they flow and the way kind of like David flows, it's like, it feels like a really messy situation ship, mm -hmm. honestly, like it's like, <laughs> which is really very natural. I mean, you know, rarely is a situation ship not super messy and right. it just feels like it's just like kind <laughs> yeah. of this beautiful chaos of like one chemistry clean. inside, right. exactly. you know, yeah, that just, just is like blowing it up really. Yeah. Um, it's and the messiness of trying to get back together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it doesn't feel sort of canned and staged and I think that's one of the things that's really magical. Two, Agreed. two talented actors, both coming off of Oscar performance is and now you know that's got to be a dream come true there yeah. but uh, outside of Ryan and em Emily the film also has a great supporting cast we're talking uh, yeah. like Hannah Wad Waddingham, Stephanie Hsu, even Lee Majors the original Wait. ball guys yeah. in this movie yes. so can you Winston, talk Winston, Winston Duke, Duke. Winston yeah. Duke yeah. is yeah. in this movie yeah. you know yeah. huge man by the way I met him one he's time big. he's you know, cool he's bigger than what I even imagined he's <laughs> big on screen so big. no yeah. camera <laughs> angles needed to show how big he is right just shoot him straight it's like wow yeah he's yeah. a big but, guy uh, what really good at action too he's really live yeah, yeah, it's really He's got cool some great to watch him. In the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but what can we expect from uh, those actors as well coming into this movie? Well, you can expect like great characters that mm -hmm. you know they again like took these characters off the page and really brought them to life. Mm -hmm. And um, together we got to make bold choices and again like allowing them freedom. And it's just sort of the way that Kelly and I work with our actors. It's like come ready to play, right? And like bring your ideas and like we'll we'll curate them together and like mm -hmm. you know but because we know the ultimate tone of the movie but you know yeah you're gonna see hannah like you've never seen her hannah hannah, she hannah showed up on set and she was like ready to go in sort of like her platinum blonde norm mm -hmm. and then like these big power suits and then she was like can i just like watch you on set for like a couple of days and next thing you know she's got like my hair and she's got like toned down sort of like layering going on i'm like I don't know if I like this. She stole your whole thing. Like she just like sucked in your aura and said, "We Wait are one now." <laughs> and then I'm the villain of the story. Like that's troubling to me. I uh, mean, you know, pr producers get a bad rap anyway. Like, come on. Uh, that reminds me no. of a Doctor Who episode that I won't get into because then we'll be here all day. Right? We'll talk about it off camera. But uh, final question, or just like final statement and question. Uh, we talked about this earlier. You said you hoped that. Um, people would really like this film, but there's one person that's like really into your film already. <laughs> Steven freaking Spielberg. The goat. The, the goat. goat. <laughs> the the goat, goat, goat says that he loves this movie. Yeah. Like Ryan Gosling already said that, hey, whatever happens, man, like that's <laughs> that's a top moment right there. That's an iconic moment. I'm good. How do you feel about Hollywood royalty, Steven Spielberg <laughs> saying this about your movie. It's gotta be the ultimate endorsement, right? It's it's really surreal and it's super humbling and it's and it's feels incredible. Mm -hmm. And it I mean to be um for him to watch it and to notice it and really understand the filmmaking of it all and like and uh, we got to speak with him and mm -hmm. he we really got to unpack it as filmmaker to filmmaker filmmakers to filmmaker and oh, that just sounds he funny. was just yeah, like We've asking all these incredible things. questions but we were like can we just stop for a second because I feel like this is a dream <laughs> hold on Slap Mr. Me. <laughs> Um, We've done a lot of things in our in the business and had a lot of like luck and stuff, but we would never felt like we were in the business until we sat with Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was the moment. Imagine. Yeah, <laughs> now, it was not, great. Not only can I imagine being in your shoes, but being in like Steven's shoes, like does he know he's the goat? Like when he talks to you guys, he's like, they're freaking out right now. They're totally freaking out <laughs> right now. Well, to be he honest, he do. really does try to make yes. you not feel like that, mm -hmm. and he's then very also um, he is just such a lover of cinema and oh, the yeah. details of like how you make movies that like he starts asking you how you got that one shot and what you mm -hmm. shot on and what exactly mm -hmm. the angle was here and like it's just really or like you know yeah. did we really have a third act 
as an example, like, and we talked about that. I mean, it's just, from story to actual, like, sort of production, mm -hmm. like, he's just asking, like, kid in the candor style. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Student of the it's game. Someone it's who loves student. it. Yeah, someone who truly no loves it. What yep. level you're on, whether you're the GOAT or, like, starting out, like, you know, the he love won't. of film is... It's just yeah. amazing. It's great. it's great. Well, Kelly, thank you. And David, thank you so much for stopping by the studio. This thank has you. been 100%. <laughs> One of the best interviews. I've been having a lot of fun here. I wish I could this stay with fun. you so much. Seriously, thank this you. This has so been much. a pleasure. This has been, been a thank pleasure. You so thank you. Much. And we created a new word, X situation. X situation. X situation. I love it. <laughs> all right. You can watch all of our studio interviews on the South by Southwest YouTube channel at youtube.com slash SSXW. I got it. I'm your host, Juju Green. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I want we that clip, that. somebody. We need to, like, just coin it.